Once again, it's on. You know what time it is. It's time to play some Toss. Welcome, everyone, to this special NFL season preview. That is episode 13, the Toss Tristan on Sports Show. It is your main man, T-Squared, Tristan Thomas. Thank you all so very much for joining us. As I said, a special edition of Toss this week. The football season begins. NFL season begins. And we got to talk about who's going to win every single division. That's right. It is the NFL season preview here on Toss. So let's get into it. Actually, before we get into it, a couple of notes, maybe just one note. I mentioned the NFL season begins as this program will air on Wednesday, September 7th. The NFL season begins technically September 8th with the first game, Bills, Rams, world champion Rams. Going to be a hell of a game. But if you're like me, the full season begins Sunday, September 11th. And again, we have to acknowledge what that day is. It was definitely a somber day in this country. 9-11 attacks, we will remember that. But hopefully a full slate of football will help ease people's minds and help them escape from remembering that. But that's when the full season starts, and that's when the Green Bay Packers start. Which means that September 8th is not only the day the season technically technically begins for the NFL, it's the day that a brand new season of Packers Quick Toss premieres from your friends at Toss Nation Media. That's right. Brand new episode premieres on Thursday at 10 a.m. on both YouTube as well as our Facebook page. That is facebook.com slash T on Sports Show. That's T-O-N Sports Show. That's 10 a.m. Thursday, September 8th. 10 a.m. Central Time. Season premiere of Quick Toss. We got to talk about the game. We got to talk about who we're going to, who's going to win that game. We'll do it all season long for you again on our Facebook page, as well as our YouTube page at TM truth number 12. Make sure you watch the season premiere and keep track of our picks all year long. Now let's get to the business at hand here on toss episode 113. It is an NFL season preview. We are going to go through every single division and make our prediction on who's going to win that division. Now, I'm not going to go as far as to predict who's going to win all these individual awards, who's going to win, you know, the the Super Bowl. I'm not going to go that far. I'm not even going to try to predict that. I like to take it in a step-by-step approach. I like to see who's going to win what game every week, the trends, uh, you know, injuries happen, so that can affect teams. I like to take it in a step-by-step approach. So we're going to just focus on division winners right now. So let's get things started off in the NFC. And we got to start off with the NFC North because that is where the Packers reside in that division, the NFC North. And they have been the kings of that division in Aaron Rodgers' time as quarterback for the Green Bay Packers. Within that division, if you don't know or if you need a refresher, which I don't think most of you do, but we're going to do it anyway. You got the Packers. You got the Vikings, you got the Bears, and you got the Lions. Now, the Packers have all of the pieces needed to make it very, very far this season. Very far. Questions about offensive line early on until Jenkins and Bakhtiari really get healthy and get back into the fold. Questions about that receiving core. Alan Lazard, we don't even know if he's going to play this Sunday against the Vikings. Randall Cobb is in his 12th season now. You got a couple of rookies in Dobbs and Watson. Sammy Watkins, can he stay healthy for a full season? Robert Tunya working his way back. Josiah DeGuar working his way back. I mean, you have a lot of questions. Uh, uh, you know, uh, 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 Amari Rogers. I mean, you have a lot of questions all over the place about this receiving core. You have questions about your offensive line. You have questions about your, you know, actually you don't have questions about your running back because you have one of the better running back tandems in all the league in Jones and Dillon. That defense is going to be top five. You heard it here first. 
They were top 10 last season. They're going to be top five this season. Special teams continues to be a work in progress. If they can just be competent, they don't even have to be elite. If they can be competent, this is a team that will go very, very far. The Vikings, new head coach, their defense isn't as strong. But with different play caller at toe, with a different head coach at toe, maybe you unlock some things offensively that were held back by Mike Zimmer. But again, I have no faith in that defense. They're going to find themselves in a lot of shootouts. The Bears, yes, you, you transition over to Justin Fields. That defense is not as good anymore. I mean, you get rid of Khalil Mack. You lost some pieces in your secondary. Rokon Smith doesn't want anything to do with you. We'll see how hard he actually plays. The Lions, yes, you were on hard knocks, but you dealt with injuries. and I don't think they're just quite there yet. They need to stockpile some more talent. Who wins that division? It's Green Bay. Green Bay will win the NFC North yet again. Again, I, I just feel their talent on both sides of the ball, not necessarily special teams, that's a work in progress, but offensively and defensively, their talent, and maybe not in the real wide receiver spot when you compare it to a Vikings team that has Jefferson and Thielen. But I just feel their talent on both sides of the ball is better than any other team within that division. Also with the longest tenured head coach within that division and Matt LaFleur, who has won more games in his first three seasons as an NFL head coach than any other coach in NFL history. Not over the last 10 years, not over the last 20 years in NFL history. He's off to a historic start. He will continue that run. Green Bay Packers win the NFC North. Let's move on to the NFC East. We have the Eagles. You have the Cowboys who won the division last year. You have the Giants and you have the Commanders. No longer the football team. A lot of people wanted them to keep that. I was calling for the Red Tails, but I digress. They are now the Washington Commanders. This one is truly a toss-up for me. So you have the Eagles, who I feel are a year ahead of schedule. Having made the playoffs last season under Nick Sirianni. Now you come into another year with consistency, consistent head coach and play callers. You upgraded a wide receiver spot. Now you have A.J. Brown in a trade from the Titans. Another year, Jalen Hurts within the same system. He's going to get even more confident. He's already been productive. We've seen it. Yes, they got waxed in the playoffs. I understand that, but they've gotten better. And again, they're a year ahead of schedule having made the playoffs last season. That's the, that, that, that just, that's a basis for improvement. It's such a toss up for me because the Cowboys, Dak Prescott, yes, they have some trouble along their offensive line. Trade away Amari Cooper. C.D. Lamb a little bit dinged up. Michael Gallup dinged up. But that defense is top flight. They have the opportunity to be a top five defense. They're very opportunistic. What does Ezekiel Elliott give them? How can they work around a, a battered and tattered line? Will they be able to keep Dak Prescott upright? The Giants, again, brand new regime, brand new coaching. Saquon Barkley will be back fully healthy for the first time in a long time. But nothing really truly excites me about the Giants. Defensively, I don't trust them. Offensively, they're still a work in progress. And the commanders are a curious case for me. You got Carson Wentz there now. And, you know, I just... I just, I don't know. He's been on a lot of teams. And again, ever since he tore 
his ACL when he was with Philly. When he was in the midst of an MVP season, he probably was going to be MVP that season. He just really hasn't been the same. It's been really up and down, really inconsistent. I just don't know what the commanders are going to give. They have a chance to be a really good defense, especially when Chase Young returns from his ACL tear. You'll be out the first four games. But I just, I don't really, I don't really trust them. I don't really trust them. And I don't trust the Giants. So it's really going to be a coin flip between the Eagles and the Cowboys. And I, if I had to give an edge right now where we sit, I got to give that edge to the Eagles. I say the Eagles win the NFC East, but the Cowboys will be close. I think it's really going to be a two-team race, but we all know how the NFC East is sometimes. We end up having to call it the NFC least because it seems like nobody wants to win that division. Everybody's always hovering around 500, if not under it. You hope it's not an NFC least year. You hope at least two strong teams are battling it out for the division crown. But who knows? But I'm going to give that slight edge as we sit here right now to the Philadelphia Eagles. The NFC South, you have the Bucks, you have the Falcons, you have the Panthers, and you have the Saints. Gronkowski no longer with the Bucks. Tom Brady had to leave training camp for personal reasons. He retired and unretired and that whole fiasco. Chris Godwin still, is still trying to work his way back from, this, in, from, from a knee injury. Still got Mike Evans. You still got Leonard Fournette. You got some players down there. The Falcons are really in rebuild mode. No more Matty Ice. He's been... He's in Indianapolis now. He's a cult. You got Kyle Pitts, tight end, who will be a big factor this season, I believe, if they could get some consistent quarterback play from Marcus Mariota, if he can stay upright and stay healthy for a full season. But you got Desmond Ritter in the, in the rear view right there. Eventually, they will go to him, I believe. The Panthers make the trade for Baker Mayfield. Named him number one starter in a, and I'm using air quotes, open competition between he and Sam Darnold. We all knew, at least I did. I, like, look, as soon as they made the trade for Baker Mayfield, he was your QB one. Darnold has been vastly inconsistent in his time in the NFL. Not to say that Baker hasn't, but Baker has had more productive years than has Sam Darnold. Your hope with the Panthers is that Christian McCaffrey gives a full season, a full healthy season, because when he is, he is the most dynamic offensive weapon in all of the NFL. He truly is. The defense, that, that defense is, is middle of the road at best. I mean, I don't really trust their defense. And then you have the Saints, who I trust the Saints defense. But now you have Dennis Allen. As a head coach, he's overseeing everything. No more Sean Payton, who, for my money, was one of the, the best play callers in all of the National Football League. One of the play, best play designers, best play callers. You got James Winston at quarterback. You got a returning Michael Thomas, finally healthy. Alva Kamara, will he be healthy all year long? He's another dynamic offensive weapon. Can Jameis be consistent? Can this defense be at times dominant to kind of cover up some of the things that the offense is missing? They're a very curious case to me. They really are. They, they will be the Bucks' competition, main competition within this division. If Baker can be consistent, if McCaffrey can be healthy, I would also put the Panthers there, maybe, but I, I trust it being a two-team race within this division, the Bucs and the Saints, and I've got the Bucs winning it. i got the Bucs winning this division. They've been there. They've done that. Tom Brady is still there. Yes, I know it's Todd Bowles. He's the head coach now. But you still have Bruce Arians. Uh, he's still around. He's still there. 
Do you still have his influence there? I say as we sit right now, Tampa Bay wins that division. But do not be surprised if the Bucks are able to, excuse me, if the Saints are able to usurp them. Would not be surprised by that. But I, I really feel at this moment firm that the Tampa Bay Bucks will win the NFC South. Let's move on to the NFC West. We have the Cardinals, the Seahawks, the 49ers, and the world champion Rams. Again, they will start the season off on September 8th at SoFi against the Bills. A lot of people are picking the Bills to win it all this season. I am not one of those people. Although I really do like them. But we're in the NFC West. This one is very difficult for me because... I mean, take the Seahawks out of the equation. They're in rebuild mode. You trade Russell Wilson. You you barely paid DK Metcalf. The defense is no longer the Legion of Boom. You had a running back retire because he had a neck issue. It's it's just a rebuild season in Seattle. They will not really play a factor, but again, that's why they play the games. They're not played on paper, but this is all we have to go off of right now. So take the Seahawks out of it. That leaves the Cardinals, Niners, and Rams. Rams world champions, but they're dealing with guys either coming back from injury or are currently working through injury. Mainly Matthew Stafford, who's dealing with an elbow issue, which could play a role in a 17-game season. It really could. It could play a role in a 17-game season. Henderson's banged up. Cam Akers is now, what, almost a year removed from, from tearing his, uh, his Achilles? Which he made that amazing comeback to even be able to play in the, at the, towards the tail end of the regular season and into the playoffs, and they went on to win a a world championship. But they've lost some pieces on defense. They don't have all the pieces they had offensively, most notably Odell Beckham Jr. towards ACL in the Super Bowl, and that's a damn shame because he was really, really lighting the Bengals up. He would have had a huge game, would have been MVP without a doubt. But he's out. He's not even signed to anyone right now. He's busy rehabbing. We'll definitely see him later on the season, whether it be back on the Rams or with a different team. We shall see, but he's no, he's not in the fold for them right now. You don't have Robert Woods anymore. He's in Tennessee. But Cooper Cup is still there. Van Jefferson can do some things. Can Tyler Higby be a little bit more consistent at the tight end spot? We'll see. But it really hinges all on Matthew Stafford's elbow. How are they able to manage that throughout the entire season for them to be able to be productive? The Cardinals, they're going to be without DeAndre Hopkins for the first six games due to his suspension. Got James Conner, who scored a lot of touchdowns. There's going to be a little bit of regression. Now, for my fantasy football players, including myself, you hope there is no regression as far as him scoring touchdowns. But you have to think that there will be. Kyler Murray, you know what he brings to the table. But their defense isn't as strong as it used to be, especially with not having Chandler Jones anymore. They're really a wild card to me. And then you have the Niners who down the stretch, and I said this on this very program, down the stretch, they were getting healthy and they were really starting to play 49er football. And they, they displayed that. Took it all the way to the NFC Championship game. Ended up losing to those Rams who they had beaten twice in the regular season. But just fell short. Now you got Bosa, who's fully healthy. You move to Trey Lance, who's going to unlock some things within Kyle Shanahan's offense that 
Jimmy Garoppolo was just keeping under lock and key because he just didn't have the ability to do it. Trey Lance's play offensively will be key because I think that defense of the Niners is going to be good again. I mean, I, that's not an area that I truly worry about for the Niners. When they're healthy, they are stout, and they are hard. They are, <laughs> they are difficult to figure. But Trey Lance's ability to take care of the football, be productive, protect himself with this style of play will be key on how far they go. If I had to pick a winner as we currently sit here, I've got to go the 49ers. And, 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 and again, the Rams will be extremely close. Extremely close. I got to go Niners winning that division. I just think that defense, again, if they stay healthy, it, it may very well be the best defense in that division. That Yes, that includes even more so than the Rams. And the dynamic that Trey Lance brings to the table he can get that offense and he can get off to a great start. If he continues to take care of the football, protect himself, that offense has a, has a chance to be really, really good with the likes of Debo, Samuel, and Brandon Ayuk, and a, a healthy George Kittle. That team has a chance to be very, very special. That's why I'm picking them to win that division. All right, so now we're done with the NFC. Let's move over to the AFC. AFC North, Bengals, Ravens, Steelers, Browns. You take the Steelers out the equation. I don't think they're really going to do too much this season. Yes, they have Mitchell Trubisky, who has been to the playoffs before. He's been a productive quarterback in this league before, despite what the Bears did to him with with their constant shuffling of coordinators and play callers and all that. Their ineptitude. He's an experienced guy. He's won in this league before. He could be very good for the Steelers ball club, but I, I just they're they're I just don't think they're gonna do enough to win a division. Mike Tomlin has never had a losing season in his entire career. So that's why I choose my words carefully here. I don't think they're gonna be uh, a, a downtrodden team. Yes, you no longer have Ben Roethlisberger who retired. You do have Mitch Trubisky back there. He's experienced. You got Najee Harris who is going to have to shoulder the, the load with a lot of touches again this season after having close to 400 touches last season. He's going to have to do it running. He's going to have to do it receiving. Deontay Johnson is going to have to step up and be that number one. Chase Claypool is going to have to step up. but I just don't see them doing enough to win a division. The Browns are not going to win the division, but that does not mean that they cannot get into the playoffs. Now, if they can somehow keep afloat through these first 11 games, meaning five and six, six and five, if they could be in that range or better. Deshaun Watson returns from his suspension with six games remaining. That is more than enough time to get hot, get wins, and sneak into the playoffs. I do not believe it will be enough for them to win the division, but that's definitely a team to watch. That's definitely a team to watch and see where they are at that point when Deshaun Watson returns. Because that team's a completely different squad with a quarterback of Watson's caliber. So in this division, I think it's going to be really a two-team race. It's going to be the AFC champion Bengals and it's going to be the Ravens. The Bengals much improved offensive line is something that they really needed to address. Got absolutely tattered and battered in the Super Bowl. It was a great weakness of theirs. They've shored that up. Joe Burrow is going to come back with another year hungry. Especially after losing the Super Bowl. His wide receiver core is one of the best in the National Football League with the likes of Jamar Chase and T. Higgins and Tyler Boyd. You got Joe Mixon back there, running back. 
You know he's going to get it done running. You know he's going to get it done passing or catching the football. And that defense, they get Jesse Bates back. That defense was really good, really sneaky good last season. I think they'll continue to be good this season. And then the Ravens. When you talk Ravens, you talk about defense. So you know they'll they'll be pretty decent. I won't say elite. I won't say top five, but they'll be pretty decent. Lamar Jackson making changes to his body to better endure the punishment. They want to see him win more from the pocket, so they're going to protect him. But they're they're not going to completely make him stop running the football. But let's be clear on that. It is a great strength of his. It, it's what hap, It's what helped him become an MVP in this league. But it seems to me they're going to be a bit more judicious in that area, and they want him to be able to win the game from the pocket as opposed to just with his legs, which makes it one-dimensional, which is why they always get bounced from the playoffs. Will they be productive enough running and throwing the football? That's the big question I have about the Ravens. But I think the AFC North will be a two-team division. It'll be the Bengals and the Ravens going at it. I got to pick the Bengals. I got to pick the Bengals. They shored up the offensive line. That defense is still good. Joe Burrow is still good. One of the better right receiving tandems in all the league. I got to go with the defending AFC champion Bengals on that one. The AFC East, you have most people's darlings, the Bills, the Patriots, the Dolphins, and the Jets. The Bills, we know how outstanding that offense is. We know how good that defense is. Most people feel that Josh Allen will probably be MVP this year. We don't know. We'll see. Stephon Diggs continues to be explosive. We know what he brings to the table. The Patriots, it's Bill Belichick. Whenever you ride off a Bill Belichick team, they just continue to do something that you said that they couldn't do. So I'm never going to count them out of this division. Never going to count them out of this division. Mac Jones will take another step forward. We'll see what they can do. The Dolphins, so another sneaky good defense. It's about Tua Tunga Viola. You're talking about the Cheetah, Tyreek Hill, now being in Miami. It's going to be a lot of explosive plays if, if Tung Viola can get him the football. And again, another sneaky good defense. And then the Jets, they're already starting Joe Flacco week one because Zach Wilson is hurt. They're already off to a rough start. Yes, they have some pieces. <laughs> yes, they'll have some guys who will, will have good years, but overall, it's still trying to come together for Robert Sala in the Jets. So I have the Buffalo Bills winning this division. I feel very confident in that. Again, I am not writing off Bill Belichick and the Patriots. You cannot write off the, the Dolphins. I think they're going to be sneaky good. But I, overall, just on both sides of the ball, I think the Bills have more talent. They play a little bit more cohesively. I think they win the division. The AFC South. You have the Colts, the Titans, the Texans, and the Jaguars. You can take the Texans and Jaguars out of the equation right now. The Jaguars, yes, with Trevor Lawrence and his second year. Now they have Doug Peterson there a competent NFL play caller. You got a healthy Travis Etienne. Signed Christian Kirk. Wide receiver. You can take the top off of defenses. But they're still very much a work in progress for me. I think they'll take great steps forward, but it's still a very much a work in progress. They need to get more talent in multiple spots on this team, both offensively and defensively, and the Texans are the Texans. 
I know they're trying to build around Davis Mills. I get it. Damian Pierce is about to eat. He's going to be your starting running back. Everybody's excited about him. He's a fantasy darling. But they are still a work in progress. We'll see if Lovey Smith can be- begin to get them on the right road. The Titans, I mean, you've got a quarterback that continues to, to take steps backward. Ryan Tannehill. You trade away A.J. Brown. You have Robert Woods, yes, but you no longer have Julio Jones. You no longer have A.J. Brown. You get a fully healthy Derrick Henry back, but if teams are not scared of Tannehill, they're going to load the box and it's going to make life hell for Derrick Henry. So they're going to have some tough sledding. They're going to have a lot of tough games. And then you got the Colts, who down the stretch just absolutely faded. Part of that was due to Wentz and his deterioration of play. And I think that kind of trickled down to other areas in the team. You go from being assured a playoff spot to being out of the playoffs. Despite having the rushing champion in Jonathan Taylor. They shored up that offensive line has gotten better. They now have Matty Ice. Under center. He's going to make a lot of better decisions. He's going to check down when he needs to. He's going to be a little bit more consistent. Yes, I know he's a little bit older. But that experience... He's taken a team to the Super Bowl before. He's, he's won divisions before. This is a steadying force. And he's going to help make this offense be a bit more productive. And, of course, that defense. One of the better defenses in the league. They'll continue to do so. I've got the Colts winning this division. Although I would not be shocked if the Titans are close. But I do have the Colts winning the AFC South. Last but not least, the AFC West, who unquestionably have the best collection of quarterbacks on all four teams in the National Football League. It's not even close. The Chiefs with Patrick Mahomes. The Chargers with Justin Herbert. The Broncos with a newly minted Russell Wilson. Signed a big fat deal with them. And then the Raiders with Carr who also traded for the best wide receiver in the game, Devontae Adams. It's going to be a lot of, and with Josh McDaniels being the head coach, you know his, his offensive schemes tend to be pretty good. That offense is going to be a sight to see with the likes of Hunter Riffro, with the likes of Darren Waller, Jacobs at running back. See what he can do running and catching. In that McDaniel system. The Broncos, again, we already mentioned Russell Wilson. That's just going to make receivers even better. Having a guy like that back there who's been to two Super Bowls, who's won one. Knows how to handle winning. Knows how to be a leader. Their defense is good. Their running backs are good. They're an interesting team. They're definitely a team to watch. The Chargers, who are going to have the most explosive offense in that division, quite possibly in all of football. With Herbert, Williams, Keenan Allen, Austin Eckler. And their defense has gotten a bit better. I mean, it, it's, it's hard to count them out. And then the Chiefs, for me, obviously losing Tyreek Hill is huge. Yeah, I mean, that, that's, that's as, as a, a huge of a loss as Devontae Adams was to the Green Bay Packers. So you're going to have to work around it. Get some guys and help them play up. To standards. Their defense doesn't really worry me. Can they get better? Yes. Much like last season, they were atrocious to start the season. 
I would say through the first four or five games, that defense was just awful for the Chiefs. And then they started to play better and be more consistent and be difficult. And it made the team better. It, it, for me, it seems like that's kind of how it's going to be again. But their defense is not better than Chargers. Their defense is not better than the Broncos. Their defense is better than the, the Raiders' defense, yes. But you got half the division who has better de- de- better defenses than you do. This division is really difficult to predict because the, the Broncos could very, I want to say very easily win it, but it's possible with the talent they have, and now they have a quarterback. So you got a good defense, you got a quarterback, but at the same time, first-year head coach Nathaniel Hackett, first-year coordinators, that could hold them back just a tiny bit. I've got the Chargers winning this division, but it will be close. The Chiefs will be right there, and I would not be surprised if the Broncos were right there, but definitely the Chiefs will be there, but I got the Chargers winning it. Just that explosive defense. And with, uh, excuse me, that explosive offense, and with that defense being just a, a bit better, that will take some pressure off of that offense to have to go out there and score every single time. Where that margin for error is, isn't hair thin anymore. I think the Chargers win that division. Could be wrong. Don't know. But that's why they play the games. So the recap, we've got the Packers, winners of the NFC North. We've got the Eagles, winners of the NFC East. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers, the winners of the NFC South. The 49ers, the winners of the NFC West. And in the AFC, we have the Bengals winning the AFC North. The Bills winning the AFC East. The Colts winning the AFC South. And the Chargers edging out the Chiefs to win the AFC West. Well, y'all, that'll do it for me. That was our NFL season preview on Toss episode 113. You know where to find me on on social media. At the 20 double on both Instagram and Twitter. That's at the, the number two, the number zero, and the word double. Follow us there. TossNationMedia.com. Your home for the Toss brand of sports, truthful, opinionated, passionate sports. It's what you deserve. And Facebook.com slash T on Sports Show. That's T-O-N Sports Show. The season premiere Thursday, September 8th of Packers Quick Toss. Make sure you watch it. Follow our picks all season long there and on YouTube. But as I said before, it's time for me to get on up out of here. It's T-Squared Tristan Thomas reminding all of you, to keep it moving forward, always forward, forward always. Until next week, so long from Toss.